up? It is indeed Friday, and you are watching what else? You're watching the Romania show. Awesome. Yeah, sweet. Good to be here, folks, and thanks for watching. I think we got a little bit of the lighting situation taken care of a little bit better today than we did the other day. Uh, sorry again for not being on the air yesterday, but I had a lot of things to do with internal political things here to do in Cluj, which of course. My lips are sealed, I can never discuss. But yeah, it's good to be with you. If you want to see, uh, join in on the conversation, you can contact me on Skype. I get it up and running at The Romanian Show. All one word is my uh, username on Skype. Or you can uh, use Twitter, the hashtag The Romania Show. And I'll turn that on right now. And if you got something to say, you want to see your comments pop up behind me on the screen that's how you get on the show and it's friday so we're going to kind of take it easy but i want to say that something really funny happened uh i think it was yesterday uh the the baccalaureate the romanian i guess you call it graduation exam uh, high school graduation exam the bac as they call it uh, for short here in romania now uh, it's a very long series of exams, it's not exactly one exam, and there are several uh, components to these exams, and um, whether you fail or actually you can delay and take these in the fall, and blah, blah, blah. it's kind of a complicated thing, but uh, this past week has been uh, some of the oral exams, uh, starting in July will be some of the more the written exams, but uh, if you are, uh, if you live in Romania, you have to take one, uh, in the Romanian language, uh, an oral exam, and uh, because there's uh, provisions for minorities, uh, certain like Hungarians or Germans or whatever, uh, they take an exam that is Romanian, but it's different, slightly different in the way it's set up. Because if your native language is Romanian, uh, you know you take that test. So 99.99 percent of people in Romania who took this exam, whose Romanian is their native or mother tongue, passed uh, the exam, yeah, so all right, congratulations. And uh, of course that means that a few did not. In fact, a total of 19 uh, kids, uh, I know, I know, what can you do? Uh, a total of 19 kids uh, were kicked out of the exam for cheating. Now. I'm not really sure. I've never taken the oral exam, so I'm not quite sure exactly how you cheat on an oral exam. Uh, you know, it's not like something you're writing on a piece of paper and maybe you got like a little crib notes and you know, oh yeah, yeah, 1876. Uh, you know, so you go in front of a human being and they say blah, 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 and you say blah, 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 you know, like, oh, uh, hold on, sir, uh, you know, what are you doing? I don't know how you get, how you get, I'm not even sure. You know, how, what would you write down if you're going to cheat on it? I don't know. I've never taken the Romanian oral exam, so I don't know, but I thought that was kind of funny. And what, on top of that, Liviu Pop was the third uh, interim minister of education, said he was shocked that these kids uh, tried to cheat. Now, remember, 19 out of, I don't know, tens of thousands of kids cheated. Now, I'm not shocked at all. Of course, it's Romanian. Come on, everybody's cheating. They, uh, that guy, his, the education minister, he's a little cheater because uh, he can barely uh, speak Romanian himself. I'm not sure he could pass the ding test, and he certainly can't write his own CV. Or he, apparently, no, excuse me, he did write his own CV, and clearly uh, needed some help. He should have been cheating on, or cheating. And uh, you know, the previous uh, education minister, who his name is Yuan Mang. Uh, I was curious about this. I did a little research. Uh, of course, he was uh, he resigned after the came basically incredibly obvious that he's been a plagiarist for years. Even though at first he said, "Oh no, you know, uh, I was just you know using a, a well-known formula and everybody uses it." And blah blah. No, the guy's a cheater and a plagiarist, no doubt about it. And uh, so he resigned. Now, of course, the new mayor of Craiova, a rather large city in Romania, she's always been defending this guy. Oh, no, he mis he's misunderstood all this other crap. But Okay, so he's not the education minister anymore, but he's still a professor, uh, I believe in Oradia, uh, which is a really nice city if you've never been there. It's a wonderful city, definitely worth it going to see. But 
the guy now has an ethics uh, investigation going on considering his plagiarism because you can't have a professor at a university who's a plagiarist. You certainly can't. I mean, come on. Even in a minute, we got standards. So, how long is that going to take? Well, it just so happens. I mean, this, you know, Romain is like, even something as basic as this, a guy who's not even in the cabinet, he's not a member of the uh, party, so uh, he's not some high-ranking politician, he's not a very rich, you know, baron, as they call him, he's not a, you know, you know this huge guy, whatever, but just because he's a loyalist and just because the red team, is, you know, wants to protect him, they're pushing back ethics investigation until the maximum legal limit, which I forgot what it was, I read it today. And just so happens that that's going to happen after the fall election. So, what does that mean? It just means that this Mon guy who resigned, uh, I guess, last month, May, you know, no one's going to hear his name until after the elections because then they were be reminded, hey, by the way, point the red team prime minister appointed this ding-dong guy, but hey, and good news, uh, hey kids, uh, I see you, the kids are here in the studio. Do you guys like poetry? Yeah. All right. Uh, if you're new to Romania or you're um, uh, not as familiar with Romania as you need to be, I should say, uh, Mihai Minescu is Romania's greatest poet. He's also on the 500 lay note. I was actually going to... I thought he was on the 100 late note. I was going to, you know, look see if I had one in the house and say, like, hey, congratulations. Because uh, today is his 123rd birthday, if he was alive. He was born 123 years ago. And I realized that he's on the 500 late note, which I don't have any, so I can't show you. But if you look online, you can see it. It's pretty cool. And uh, if you don't speak Romanian, some of his poems have been translated into English. Uh, of course, they, you know, it's poetry. You can't really translate it because it's the... The feeling and the whatever, but congratulations uh, go to the Romanian people. I always thought it was really cool to, you know, really celebrate their poets and uh, writers and that kind of thing. And I've, I've always said a philosophy, uh, talking about it, that you can go to a country, I mean, you go to a brand new country, you know nothing about it, and you take out their money, and you look who's on their who's on their money, and whoever pictures is on their money, that kind of tells you a little bit about the culture. Now, if you look at Romania, well, who did this on the money? They got, uh, the one little note is a artist, a painter. The five is a music composer. Uh, the 10, I completely forget who's on the back of that one. Uh, the 50, 50 lay note is a uh, aviation in, uh, innovator. Invented a lot of stuff to do with aviation, and of course, uh, 500 is uh, a poet. So you got a poet, a painter, a musician, you know, kind of a cultural test. You know, this country values their artists. You look at the United States, you got a genocidal maniac, uh, you got a slave owner, <laughs> you know, it's like, uh, uh, you know, it kind of shows you like a guy who started a, you know, a, a fought a war. You know, uh, Ulysses S. Grant, a general, you know, it's like, uh, it really shows you what kind of culture you're living in. So, maybe that's cool, cool guy, good poet, and he was born 123 years ago, which is kind of cool. So, uh, back to Ponta, uh, this little scandal with who's going to the European Union meeting is just not even close to being ended. I, I mentioned on my last show on Wednesday, I thought it was crystal clear that uh, Bosesco was right, and I still think that he is. And Ponta just, you know, he's dragging this thing up. And, uh, and I've been, you know, reading some articles, reading some, you know, reader comments, not just on my website, but uh, on these other news sites and stuff. And people are like, why in the world does this guy even want to go so bad? What's really weird is that on the 26th of June, uh, at a, uh, meaning two days beforehand, the one we're talking about, there is a meeting for, uh, I guess you could call it, the head of the government, and Ponta is clearly invited and is clearly going to go. He is the person who's always going to have been going, and it has to do with like legislation and all this other stuff. The stuff that he's uh, the prime minister, that's his business. The one on the 28th is the one under dispute. And Ponta uh, was like, hey, dude, I got an invitation. I was invited to go. That proves that... You know, I'm supposed to be going, not the president. Well, 
he, he said he was going to show it to the press, but someone said, dude, that's not an invitation. That's just the program. That's just the schedule. You know, all the a attendants and aides and, uh, you know, the limo drivers, everybody gets a copy of that. It's no big deal, dude. It's like if I go to the Cannes Film Festival and I, I get a program, I go, hey, uh, I was an um, invited guest. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm just a guy with a program. It doesn't mean anything. So, apparently, Pontus has been meeting with Obsesco. They met one time trying to, trying to hammer this out. It doesn't work. Long story short, EU Constitution or the EU Treaty says the Ding Dong country has to settle it. And a lot of European countries have a different governmental setup than Romania does because Romania has a, a president with a lot more powers. The president of Italy, there is a president of Italy, a lot of people don't know that, but he mostly uh, does one thing, and that's uh, he handles the administration stuff when the prime minister gets sacked. You know, he doesn't do anything the rest of the time. Well, France and Romania have a very similar government, and the president of France, of course, you know, everyone follows, well, at least here in Europe, <laughs> in America, I don't know who anybody is, but <laughs> here in Europe, of course, uh, was a big election in France, uh, I believe, last month, and, you know, that was for the president. Prime Minister of France is not as powerful as the president because of the way this government set up. So anyway, long story short, Romania's got to decide. As I mentioned on Wednesday, uh, the parliament uh, here in Romania passed a declaration, which, you know, today's jelly bean day and doesn't mean anything legally. And Basescu clearly stated, hey, I'm going. And now uh, he and Ponte are supposed to be meet, have meetings to sort it out. Nobody has ever... Im to my satisfaction, explain really why he wants to go. Why does he want to go so bad? I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's impressing somebody. I don't know. I have no idea. But that's what's going on. I also mentioned the other day uh, about uh, the energy prices going up and the deregulation of the energy market, which, you know, I mean, Enron, jeez, oh, it's just a bad idea for everybody. But nobody's asking my opinion, so... You know, hey, that's how it goes. But I read an article, and it, you know, seems like a coincidence, but I, I read an article, literally, uh, I believe it was today, earlier today, and it said the old fashioned, it's called the Sol, there's something called the Solba in Romania. If you've never been to Romania, or you've been here just a couple of times, and you're not quite sure what a Solba is, it technically means, I guess, a uh, uh, heater. But if you go into a Romanian home or building, uh, I've seen them in buildings, like in commercial buildings and stuff, there's a, a, a large, like a, from floor to ceiling in the corner or against the wall is a, like a, looks like a little chimney or something. It's, it's ceramic. A lot of times they're quite ornate and they're usually um, extended out from the wall. They're not buried in the wall like a, like a chimney would be. And near the bottom there's like a little metal grate and inside is where you put the fuel. Now, some of them are old-fashioned devices that have been connected to the gas line, so there's no longer any wood or anything in there, but um, essentially what happens is the old old school way is you put wood in the bottom, it has like a little grate, and as it rises through the through the soba, uh, the ceramic exterior absorbs the heat for a long time and then, you know, radiates it outwards and heats up the home. So, what did I see? I saw an article that said the old-fashioned Wood-fired, ceramic, traditional Romanian soba, which has been around for hundreds of years, is now coming back in fashion because there's a lot of smart people here in Romania. Nobody said there are any dummies in this country. And, uh, you know, they're heating up their home. They're thinking, hey, every year the prices get higher and higher and higher without any controls. You know, wood grows on a tree, you chop it down, you don't need to import it, you don't need to do crap, so uh, I think I'm going to heat my house the old-fashioned way. So that was uh, interesting to see that. And uh, let's see what else we got going on here. Um, oh, I also mentioned, uh, you know, these things, it's always kind of, I don't know, cracks me up in a way or uh, tickles me, uh, amuses me in some way that I, I talk about something here on the show and then I notice it like, kind of takes off in the Romanian press. And, uh, or sometimes the international press, the, the Ponta Basescu thing originally started out a couple weeks ago. And I was like, oh, come on, guys, get this resolved. Because sooner or later, there's a few foreign journalists here that work out of Romania or club of Romania. I'm not going to say any names right now because we'll do a whole show about these little bastards. 
But uh, they're always looking for a reason to put down their minute. And I said, oh, gosh. And, you know, sure enough, oh, there's this squabble. Oh, there's this, you know. So it's gotten out to the wider world. And, but I mentioned on Wednesday, the ICR, which is the Romanian Cultural Institute, um, it's not that big of an organization. I guess you could call it the Endowment for the Arts. Or the, you know, it's like the... They sponsor, you know, really basic things like ballet and poet poetry, you know, and they work with all these inter. It's one of these like feel good government agencies. It's, it's all the classical uh, culture, poetry, music, dance, and being promoted inside Romania and, uh, and outside Romania. And they of course work with all the cultural institutions from around the world to, you know, bring Japanese theater to Romania or whatever. And you know, one of these, th there's no political power there. But because this tiny little institution with a very small budget, relatively speaking, is under the control of the president of Romania, who gets to pick the director and all this other stuff, Ponta and his buddy said, no, it has to be under parliamentary control so they can put their own guy in there. You know, they just don't leave anything alone. Well, I mentioned it just because it happened. But, you know, don't mess with eggheads because they write long-winded editorials in the newspaper. And I noticed a lot of them were getting upset, man, because they're like, dude, you know, lay off our institution. What are you doing? They're good people and all this other stuff. And, they, and as far as I can tell, they are. I mean, they haven't been involved in any sort of, like, corruption scandals or anything else because it's uh, it's about ballet and stuff. It's not, I'm not really quite sure how you would even go about making that into criminal activity, but... Anyway, I'm glad to see somebody's kicking up a fuss. We'll see if anything actually happens. But, yeah, Ponta's like, oh, I got everything the president has, I'm taking it away. I mean, the guy is literally obsessed with uh, Bosesco, and so is his other buddy. I should tell you, the I don't want to get too much into politics on the show, but Red Team Ponta, he's the prime minister. Now, obviously, that's a pretty powerful post. Uh, the way the parliamentary system works in Romania is that all the legislation uh, goes through the parliament, and uh, the prime minister has some kind of a uh, little bit of executive power as well. He certainly uh, shapes the agenda of what's going on. He also appoints all the other ministers, uh, including you know the foreign affairs minister, the foreign minister or secretary of state in English, American English. And, uh, you know, economics guys, he has a, a lot of power um, for a guy who's not directly elected. And yet the president position, who is the president who is directly uh, elected, is uh, the head, head, head guy. The head, of the, the head of the top of the list. And uh, when it comes down to the last guy signing on the paper, it's the president. So, red team, point them. Yellow team, which is their allies. I call them the yellow team. Uh, rally is a two, combination of two political parties that united. It's a guy named Crin Antonescu, who is an old bastard guy. He's an old bastard, but he wants to be the next president. So the deal with these guys is Ponta. All right, dude, you're running the day-to-day -day hustle. He's a Ponta's a young guy. He's like 40, 41. I mean, politically speaking, he's pretty young. Antonescu is a little bit older, and the deal is that, um, you know, he gets the top post when it comes available because what these guys are planning on doing, I'll just tell you right now, it's not a super secret. They always deny it, but they're going to wait until they think the moment is right. They're always talking about like, hey, is it today's boss? Is it today's boss? No, not quite today. But soon, they have the option of suspending the president. The parliament can pass a vote and suspend the president. You know how I know that? Because they already did it. <laughs> three or four years ago, I can't remember when it was, and uh, so the president is taken out of office just by a vote from the parliament. The only problem is that you have to hold a special election after that, which they did three or four years ago, and they did. Bosesco, the current president, he was president, he's been president since 2004. Uh, he got suspended and he held a special election, and ka he won! So, you know, bad move. So these guys are like, chomping at the bit. They're like, when can we suspend them? Which we could do today, if we really wanted to. They can suspend them tomorrow. They got the votes. But when can we suspend them and be sure that he's not going to win uh, 
you know, another election and get back in power because the guy's unstoppable. You know, it's like, oh, I mean, I think that literally must grind their teeth at night thinking about this guy. But anyway, let's talk about one more. Um, oh, here, we'll say something real cool, uh, fast, which is cool, which is that I saw that Norway, which is not a member of the European Union, of course, although they do work, uh, they have a lot of treaties and, you know, they work a lot with the European Union. They're apparently changing their labor laws so that Romanians can soon, not yet, but soon, uh, go there and work legally, which is kind of cool. I actually know a few Romanians who um, they got a Norwegian language program here uh, in Cluj, and uh, I know a lot of Romanians have been up there. Norway's a wealthy country, and they got a lot of opportunities for jobs, so... If you're a Romanian or you know someone's Romanian and they're thinking about working uh, in Norway, it looks like pretty soon they're going to be able to do it uh, fairly easily. They're opening up the labor market to Romanians, which is cool. Oh, one last clarification about something. I want to get on a little bit of a rant. Uh, on Wednesday, I was talking about sovereign bonds, and I got a little confused because I was tired. Uh, everything I said was true, but the Romanian bonds are being sold in dollars, um, which means that if you buy a bond for, say, $100, and the interest rate is 5%, you know, you come back in a year, you get $105. Now, all that is, uh, I guess, a, a safe investment for certain uh, financial in entities, whether, you know, these mutual fund groups or uh, pension funds or banks. It's not necessarily like a, a regular person would be that interested in them. But, <clears throat> you know, the problem is the, the low, which is the money that the government of Romania uses, is up and down all over the place. I mean, even today, I, I was uh, looking at the exchange rates. So, it's costing the Romanian people more than 5%. Now, that's the, long, the short version, which is uh, financial strategy. It's very interesting. I'm not... I, I've got to do some more research on this because I'm not sure that this has been going on very long. This uh, selling of uh, treasury bonds in U.S. dollars. Not euros, and not Romanian currency, but selling government, Romanian government bonds in dollars. But don't know much more than that. I did want to clear up the uh, confusion because I was talking about as though they were being sold in labor, which they're not. On Wednesday, I was super tired. I'm still pretty tired, but we're getting, we're getting there. And uh, so, yeah, I'll have to do some more research on that before I get into it. But let's talk about in the book, who is... Um, the former mayor of Cluj, then the prime minister of Cluj up until January of this year, and now theoretically our next um, mayor here in Cluj, and I uh, say theoretically he hasn't been 100% you know, stamped on the paper, but it looks like he's you know going to be the next mayor. This guy, he was also the president of the Orange Team, um, which he resigned, I believe, yesterday. Because well, he did really bad in the local elections. He's still a member of the Orange Team. He's just no longer going to be the president. Of it. Okay, whoop de whoop But, you know, this little guy, he runs his mouth. Now, here's the thing. I, I've been talking, you know, I live in Cluj, so uh, I have a little bit more inside information than I would if it was, you know, the mayor of another town. The other guy who was running against them, the red and yellow team guys, the guy named Nicuara, you know, I've talked to a lot of people that know him. The guy was, you know, another old bastard politician. Nobody really was crying because he didn't win. Personally, uh, if I had to pick, of course, I didn't vote, but I would say, you know, at least have a mayor who's on the same party as whoever's in the capital simply because you get more money. Hey, I'm a little bit of a man, right? You gotta, you gotta be realistic. But, you know, book, right? He's a, sm he's a smart guy. He he's not a, an uneducated oaf. And, you know, he's a, he speaks in grammatically correct sentences, and he's a very good with words. And, you know, you got to really watch this guy because, you know, he, he, he resigned from the post of president of the Orange Team. Okay, no, no big deal there. But he, got, he, he had a little speech that he gave. And the speech was to his fellow Orange Team member, and, and he says, "Cine nu muncește nu greșește," which means that the one who does not work does not make any errors. And essentially, what he was saying, in the context of what he was saying, is that oh, all of you guys, other Orange Team members, you lost the local elections, but look at me, I won. So your excuses are no good because if I could do it, you could have done it. 
as I mentioned, it came out of nowhere in terms of statistical results in the polling before the election. And on the day of the election, three out of four exit polls run by very reputable firms who otherwise, you know, very accurately predicted all the other races in Romania, you know, said that he lost, but yet he magically pulled out a win. And uh, at last I heard, the Red Young team were saying, like, we need to re recount the votes. And I think the people who recount the votes said, no, we're not going to do it. So Bulk essentially won. Did he really win? Well, if even if it was all legit, let's just imagine, okay, uh, all legit. Every vote that he got was fair and square, you know, honest engine. He won by a squeaker. He won by less than 1% of the voter or 1% of the votes cast. You know, uh, the, the narrowest of victory. So he's got no way that he can stand there more than say, I won and you should have won. No, you did. You barely won. If five more guys woke up in the morning and went down to vote instead of, you know, you know, going doing something else, he would have lost, dude. So don't give me this, you know, moral high ground crap. So, you know, he's, he's kind of a little asshole. I, mean, I never really quite realized it. I, I remember back when he was mayor of Collusion, most of the time people focused on what he was doing. Like, his, you know, his, uh, starting these projects and you know, cleaning up the streets or whatever. Not really his like, words on a regular basis, but this guy, you know, he's a little thing. So, and then somebody asked him about why he resigned back in January. Now, this is really interesting because if you look at the foreign press, they have a very simple explanation. Why did the prime minister... Resign in January because of austerity measures, and that's not really quite exactly what happened. But here in Romania, uh, obviously, that's a really simple explanation. It's a two-second explanation. Well, Bok yesterday said, "Hey, you can't blame uh, the austerity measures for losing your election because I won." And then someone said, "Well, hey, dude, why did you resign? You know?" And you know, he's kind of, he's a weasel. He didn't say like, well, I resigned because of austerity measures. No. What he was saying was that it was just incumbent upon him as a response. You know, like a word soup is what we call it in English, where there was no real response. And this is what, the, I wrote it down because it was an interesting quote. He said, if we did not, back when he was prime minister, if we did not put in place these austerity measures, we would have ended up just like Greece. That's what he said. Now, why is this interesting? Because number one, like I said, Bulk is not a stupid guy. He's not a country bumpkin with a suit, like some Romanian politicians are, God bless him. No, Bulk is a smart guy. He is not somebody who says something like that and is just talking trash. He, he, he said it because he means it. Now, it's all a lie, and he knows it's all a lie. Uh, I'm not gonna get it too far into depth about why Greece is in the trouble that it is in right now, but uh, I'll just mention the words Goldman Sachs. Uh, uh, they call it American, it's really international trading firm or financial firm, which uh, suckered Greece into buying things it didn't need. Let's be honest, they sucker punched the economy. And uh, they basically started the bankruptcy rolling along, train rolling along in Greece, and they deliberately wrecked their economy. Now, you know, let's be honest, there's a million factors involved with everything. You can't just say, oh, well, if Goldman Sachs hadn't been around and everything would have been fine. No, they had other problems. But they were sabotaged so that Goldman Sachs could make a short term profit. That's uh, something for another time, but you can look it up. Second thing is, why this is all a lie is that the austerity measures started before the crisis happened. Actually, that's not quite true. What happened was, uh, 2008, uh, Francisco, uh, no, there was an election. And, oh, they got rid of the old prime minister and they brought in uh, the orange team. Red team out, orange team in. And what they did was they contacted the IMF, and up until that point, uh, there hadn't been a very large debt uh, to the IMF. And they suddenly started borrowing. 
millions and billions of years. Then, just at around that time, the you know crisis happened. Uh, we call it the crisis in Romania. It's the financial tsunami, if you want to call it that. Started kicking in in America. The housing crisis, credit, blah blah blah. I'm sure you've heard about it. I don't need to go into that. And it rolls on over to Europe and starts hitting Romania as well. Legitimate thing. But they had already received the IMF funds before that happened. And in fact, uh, I wrote about it. There was an IMF report, and they literally had the gall to say, well, at the time we loaned this money to Romania, that we didn't know this you know, financial crisis was coming, but thank God we were there, because we helped them out. Well, if the financial crisis hadn't happened by the time they borrowed all this money, then why did they borrow so much money? That question has never been answered, but I guess who's responsible for that? Mr. Book. Yeah, he's the one who started it. So, the IMF loans you money, whether you're Romania or Jamaica or Albania or whoever you are, pretty much everybody except for, you know, five countries in the world. And then they come up with a master plan of how you're going to pay them back. And the master plan, although it has tweaks and variations and everything else, is pretty much always the same. Sell off all state-owned enterprises to uh, private owners at sometimes incredibly low prices, but it doesn't matter. And number two, uh, cut down on your workforce, government workforce. And number three, uh, do exactly what we tell you to do at all times. So Romania first borrowed money that it didn't need, then magically it did need it because of the financial crisis. Then the IMF said, cut all these jobs, cut all these jobs, and uh, you know, lower salaries and uh, you know, raise the sales tax of the VAT or TVA, as it's called in Romania, and uh, do all this other crap. And then, you know, Bulk says, well, we had to do it or we would have been like Greece. Well, last time I looked, Greece had I loans to the IMF too. So if they're doing, if Greece is doing what the IMF tells them to do, and you know, they're about to be snowed under by their own financial problems, then, you know, which is it, dude? So basically, Bulk is just talking smack. He knows he is. The, the guy is too smart to be just saying things like this. He, he he's a calculated guy, and, and I, you know, I'm get, I'm starting to get a little bit nervous. Good news is nobody watching the show from the you know, remaining government accounts, which is fine. I'm fine right now. But this guy lives in my town, and who knows what he's up to? Because uh, once he gets uh, you know stamped and certified, and he actually you know walks down to the city hall and you know gets his name on the door. Uh, I gotta tell you, it's, it's, he's gonna start uh, his little machinations, and I'm really not that thrilled about living in this town while he's uh, running the show. Oh my gosh, I'm tired, I realized it. So, I think that we're gonna have to end on that note. Good lord, that's a little depressing, but um, that's how it goes. I got things I gotta do. So, folks, thanks for watching. Uh, although I. Did not press the button. Oh, little show news here. I did not press the button, but I found the video camera that I want to buy. I'll be sure to be ordered next week and delivered next week. And I'm going to meet with someone later today who's going to hopefully be helping me doing some cool stuff. So if you've been watching the show and you've been liking it, you know, thanks. First of all, yay, thanks for your support. And uh, from my heart, from, my, from me to you, I thank you. And, um, We'll get started getting some produce segments going, and with someone else, uh, uh, someone else's face besides mine. Of course, uh, I like my face. A few people do, but not everybody wants to see just a dude sitting here. Talk, 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 talk. I mean, if you fast forward this episode, here's what you see. Boring. Visually, it's boring. So. Unless I have a naked girl sitting next to me, which is not going to happen anytime soon. Not in the budget. <laughs> That's a joke. Okay, folks, I really do got to get out of here. So, I will see you on Monday for show. And I do want to say, thanks for watching.